So, the program that we have seen here the timer 1 is acting as an event counter. So, this is uh, pin uh, 3.5, so that is T1 pin. So, there I am feeding the pulses that are coming and then this uh, set B as, uh, as we have said that set B 3.5 will make this uh, port 3.5 as input port by making it high. Then uh, for our display purpose we can say that, that I, I can have 8 LEDs connected on this uh, port P2's uh, lines. Okay, so, uh, we have seen that uh, we are outputting this um, uh, account of TL1 through A register onto this P2. So, we can uh, do that here. So, we can connect a number of LEDs here. So, you can uh, connect something like this, maybe put a register, then we put one LED here, put an LED here. So, this way for, for each of them we can have a current limiting resistance followed by some LED. Okay. So, that way for every every point we can connect on a. So, 8 LED, 8 such LEDs can be connected. So, it will have a nice display of the pattern of uh, number of pulses that are received in uh, this T1 bit. And since we are we cannot display more a number more than uh, um, 8 bit wide. Okay. So, in port P2 it has got only 8 lines. So, we have got 8 LEDs. So, that is fine. So, we can just uh, reload this uh, um, counter uh, with 0 after there is an overflow to F F. So, next uh, we will look into another example. So, like this. So, we assume that a 1 hertz frequency pulse is connected to pin 3.4 and we want to write a program to display uh, counter 0 on an LCD. So, this uh, whatever be the counter 0 value we want to uh, put it on the LCD. So, initial value of T H 0 we set it as minus 60 and from that point onward, so it will be uh, continuing. So, in the first round it starts with 0 and counts uh, 256 events and uh, since on reset uh, T L 0 is 0. So, what we have to do it, uh, so uh, we do not want that, so to so, so we, we want to reload, uh, the, we want to load this T H with 0 with minus 60 at the beginning of the program. So, let us uh, have a look at the program. So, first this uh, LCD setup uh, parts initializing LCD. So, this A call LCD setup, so that is not a part of our uh, this program. So, we assume that there is an LCD setup routine, so which will be doing this LCD setup part. So, some control words are to be set to LCD and all that. So, assuming that it is already done by this LCD setup routine. So, we uh, initialize this counter 0 in mode 2. So, again the same thing. So, this the lower order 4 bits. So, they will tell you uh, like the mode setting and so it is a type it is a counter now and it is mode 2. So, T H 0 is initialized to minus 60 and set B uh, P 3.4. So, this will make this uh, T 0 as input just like in the previous example we are using set B P 3.5. So, here we have to use set B P 3.4 to set T 0 as input. Then set B T R 0, it will start the timer, it will start the counter and move uh, A comma T L 0. So, after every 60 seconds, so we have started, we have loaded T 0 with minus 60. So, after 60 seconds, it will be uh, after 60, uh, after every 60 such events, so there will be uh, the timer will overflow. Okay. So, uh, so move A comma T L 0. So, then we convert uh, this uh, so A call convert. So, it will convert in some registers R 2, R 3, R 4. So, again this routine is not a part of uh, our discussion because this is uh, some display routine. So, that uses this register R 2, R 3, R 4 to maybe to hold this hour, minute and second part of the display. So, that is not uh, shown here. And then uh, we check this T F 0, the T F 0 is overflowing, then we go to back, so that means uh, we have uh, one loop is over. So, T L 0 value will be uh, again, uh, so if it is not bit, so it, it is not yet over, then this the T L 0 value will again be go to going to A and then this converter will convert the value into this uh, hour, minute, second display and this display routine will be called. And when this bit is set, when this bit is set, then uh, the, the, uh, we so the, now this TR0 has to be stopped, the timer has to be stopped and this uh, overflow flag has to be reset. So, that is done and it is again going to start that timer. So, this way we can have a program for this purpose.
next we consider the situation where gate is equal to 1 in the T mod register. So, whatever we have discussed so far, their gate was equal to 0. So, nothing, uh, so externally there was no control. So, everything was controlled by the internal TR, TR bit. So, we have used uh, set B TR 0 and set B TR 1 for timer 0 and 1. Now, if gate is equal to 1, we can use the hardware to control the start and stop of the timers as well. So, that is uh, many times that is uh, useful and uh, they are done by this INT 0 and INT 1 pins. Okay. So, INT 0 is pin number 12 of port 3 is bit number 2 and pin number INT 1 is pin number 13 of port 3 is bit number 3. So, they can control the timer operation. So, if this gate bit is set to 1, then for timer 0, whenever this INT 0 is uh, activated, then only the timer will operate and if it is not deactivated, then the timer will stop. So, that way we can have control uh, both externally and internally for these timers. So, so for turning on the timer for, for the software side for internal uh, turn on, so we have to use this instruction set B T R 0. So, that remains. Apart from that, we can have this external gate equal to 1. We'll, uh, so, if gate equal to 1, it will count up if INT0 input is high and TR0 is equal to 1. So, if, if these two conditions are satisfied, then only uh, the up counting will take place for gate equal to 1. And for gate equal to 0, it will be only the software control. So, only TR0 will be equal to 1 will be sufficient. So, this we have seen. So, so, there are so many uh, special function registers with respect to timer. So, this TCON registers address is 88 hex, it is bit addressable and as you see that the last digit is 8. So, it, it is that uh, that is why it is bit addressable. So, whenever you have got this last digit as 8 or 0, the register is bit addressable in case of 8051. Then T mod register, it is the mode control. So, its address is 89 and it is not bit addressable. Then TL0, TL1, TH0, TH1. So, these are all these uh, timer timer uh, values, low byte and uh, high byte okay. and they are not bit addressable. Then we have got this T2 con. So, T2 con is for 8052 and uh, we have got some uh, low byte captures. So, these are some uh, timer 2's modes, uh, some special modes are there. So, for that purpose, those these registers are used. Next, we will look into the interrupts. So, in case of 8085, we have uh, seen interrupts and then the, we have seen that there are different types of interrupts that, uh, that are there in 8085, RST interrupts, then INTR, trap and things like that. So, in case of uh, 8051, we have got two interrupt lines, so INT0 and INT1 as the external interrupts plus there are some other interrupts uh, that that mm, they are actually internal interrupts. So, we will uh, look into them. So, this uh, diagram is very generic. So, if the interrupt occurs at this point, so it will be jumping over to the ISR, the inter corresponding interrupt service routine. It will finish off this ISR and this return I return from interrupt. So, this instruction, so it will take it back to the instruction. Uh, from where it was interrupted. So, it, it was interrupted at this point. So, the processor jumps after finishing this move B hash 10 instru hash 20 instruction. So, after completing this instruction, the processor will come back and start this multiply AB this instruction. So, in case of 8051, there are 5 sources of interrupts. Okay. So, they are called uh, timer 0, timer, timer 0 overflow, timer 1 overflow, then external interrupt 0, external interrupt 1 and serial port interrupt. So, these are the various interrupts that we have. So, timer 0, timer 1, uh, we have seen that TF0, TF1 bits. So, as I said that you can either pull it in a program or you can have, uh, the, you can have a uh, interrupt generated when the uh, overflow has occurred. There are some enhanced version of 8051 that has got 22 different sources. So, the, so the, the advanced version of 8051 that has got more timers, programmable counter arrays, ADCs and more external interrupts than serial interrupts. So, they are there. So, uh, but the basic 8051 has got only 5 interrupts. So, we will try to understand how these 5 interrupts will operate. 
So, if the interrupt event occurs and interrupt flag for that event is enabled and interrupts are enabled, then the interrupt will be recognized. So, first from the first of all the interrupt should be enabled the, as we have seen for 8085 also the all the interrupts should be enabled and we can have masking of interrupts. So, here also the same thing that interrupt flag for that event must be enabled for the mask uh, mas for the masking purpose. So, the interrupt is not masked off and the interrupt has really occurred in the uh, world. Okay. So, if all these things happen then only an interrupt is uh, considered to have occurred and it will be taken care of by the processor. How is it taken care of? So, first the current program counter value is pushed on to stack and before that you can write down step number 0 which is basically finishing the current instruction. So, we can write another step, uh, step number 0 here. So, which says that finish current instruction. finish current instruction the instruction that it was executing and then only it will be going into the interrupt service routine. So, after that after finishing the current instruction, so it will be uh, uh, the save the program counter value into the stack and the program execution will continue at the interrupt vector address for that interrupt. So, in case of 8051 all the interrupts are vectored interrupts. Okay. So, there is nothing like non vectored interrupt like INTR in 8085 we had here all the interrupts are vectored interrupt. So, their addresses are fixed. So, execution will start at a fixed address and then after some time when this uh, interrupt service routine is over then this program counter uh, this rate i instruction is uh, encountered and then the program counter is popped out uh, from the stack and the program execution will resume from the point where it was left off. So, that is the thing. So, this is the standard interrupt operation flow. So, that is uh, true for other processors also. The only thing is that in case of 8051 the interrupts are all vectored interrupts. Next we look into the interrupt priorities like what if two interrupt sources interrupt at the same time. In case of uh, 8085, so there is a uh, priority setting and we have seen that that craft has got the highest priority and then that is non maskable interrupt then 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. So, they have got the priorities in that order. So, in case of uh, 8051 also, so we have got the concept of priority. The interrupt with the highest priority will get service first and all interrupts have a default priority order. So, priority can also be set to high or low. So, that can also be done. So, these are the interrupt priorities. So, there are some special function registers that are useful for these interrupts. The first special purpose register that we will look into is called interrupt enable. So, this interrupt enable, so it has got um, uh, 7 bits, uh, 8 bits out of that this bit number 6 is not uh, meaningful. So, it is not documented like for what is the purpose of this bit number 6. So, that is not documented. So, we can, um, so for as far as the user is concerned, so we, need, uh, we, we cannot uh, do anything with this particular bit. So, this first bit or bit number 7 is the enable interrupt. So, this is the enabling, uh, this is for enabling all the interrupts in the system. So, it is a global interrupt enable and it must be set to 1 for any interrupt to be enabled. So, this EA must be set to be equal to 1 for this enable and if EA is 0 then all the interrupts in the system they are disabled. Then this bit number 5 is the ET2. So, this is the uh, timer interrupt. So, we have got this uh, timer interrupt uh, 2. Okay. Then this we have got uh, this. Uh, so, that is true for uh, 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 timer 2. So, timer 2 8051 we do not have timer 2. So, that is uh, in 8052 you will have, but this bit is there in 8051 also. Then we have got ES0. So, this is the serial interrupt or serial communication interrupt. So, we have uh, so for serial communication we have got both um, byte receive and byte send, but both of them are uh, controlled by this ES0 by a single interrupt. Okay, so there is uh, both receive and transmit they are uh, they generate the same interrupt ES0. 
then we have got E T 1. So, E T 1 is for timer 1 for so this is e, then E X 1 for external interrupt 1 then you we have got E T 0 for timer 0 and E X 0 for external interrupt 0 and there is also a reset uh, value. So, reset value for uh, this uh, interrupt uh, uh, enable register is all 0. So, you see that initially all the interrupts are disabled and this uh, this interrupt enable register is A8 hex, the address is A8 hex. So, for any reasonable system design that allows uh, the interrupts uh, to be occurring in the outside world. So, we should set this E a bit to 1. So, this may be one important step in the whole operation of the system that the E a bit should be turned on otherwise none of the interrupts will be sensed by the processor. So, that is this uh, TCON register that we have seen previously, it comes once more when we are going into this uh, uh, interrupt uh, uh, discussion. So, we have seen this higher order nibble, this uh, these 4 bits, so they are dedicated for timers, timer 1 and timer 0, they are uh, um, overflow flag and the run flag, so those 2 uh, bits, but this lower order 4 bits, so they are actually i e 1, i t 1, i e 0 and i t 0. So, i e 1, so this is set by the CPU when high to low transition detected on external interrupt 1. So, this will be, so when there is a high to low transition on this uh, interrupt 1, then this i e 1 bit will be set and accordingly this i e 0 bit will be set if there is a high to low transition detected by the processor on the interrupt uh, uh, on the INT 0 line. So, there are two interrupt pins INT 0 and INT 1 and whenever it sees a high to low transition on those lines, these uh, pins are uh, these bits are set to their uh, set to proper values, they are set to 1. And then we have got IT 1, so IT 1 is the interrupt 1 type control. So, if it is it is set or cleared by software to specify the falling edge or low level triggered. So, if it is, uh, so you can control this set, uh, the, this IT1 bit. So, if we set this IT1 bit to 1, then it will be a falling edge triggered flip, uh, a falling edge triggered uh, uh, sensing. So, when the interrupt line goes from low uh, high to low, it will be taken to be interrupting the system. And if it is 0, then when the line INT1 line is, uh, INT1 line is low, it will be taken as interrupt for the processor. So, we have to be careful in setting this uh, interrupt types. So, depending upon the device uh, that we are connecting to this uh, to the system. So, we may like to have this interrupts of type uh, this uh, edge triggered or level triggered, but both are low both uh, so edge triggering also high to low edge and this level triggering is also this uh, low level triggered. And similarly, we have got this IE 0 and IT 0 bits for the INT 0 interrupt look into the priorities. So, we have got, so this is the default priority. So, INT 0 has the highest priority followed by TF 0 timer that is timer 0 followed by interrupt 1 followed by uh, uh, timer inter, timer 1. Then this RI plus TI, so this is receive interrupt and transmit interrupt. So, these are for serial communication. So, they are uh, by a single interrupt. So, oh, that is why we have, we can write it as RI plus TI as if one interrupt is generated. So, this is the default priority. So, this immediately tells you that if a number of interrupts occur simultaneously, then the, um, the processor will first respond to INT 0 and uh, if INT 0 is not there, it will respond to TF 0, TF 0 is not there, it will respond to INT 1. So, it will go like that, but uh, unlike 8085, so here you can alter the priority setting. So, you can uh, you can say like this that we have got this. Uh, PT2. So, this is the this is one register which is called IP register. So, interrupt priority register. The first two bits do not have any um, uh, do not have any functionality. Then this PT2 is the priority of timer 2 interrupt. So, PS is the priority of timer uh, serial port interrupt. Then PT1 is the uh, priority of timer 1 interrupt. So, then the PX1 is the priority of external interrupt 1. PT0 is the priority of uh, timer interrupt 0 like that. Now, if you set one bit to any of those bits to 1, that interrupt will assume the highest priority. 
For example, if you look into this uh, command, so move IP this instruction move IP comma 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 B the binary pattern. So, one so this P x 1 this bit is 1 and rest of the bits are 0. So, in that case I n t 1 will assume the highest priority. So, this order will now change and it will be something like this. Uh, so, once you do this thing this setting. So, my I n t 1 will have the highest priority I n t 1 followed by I n t 0 then T f 0 then uh, I n t 1 sorry then I n t 1 is already done. So, the T f 0 then uh, this uh, T f 1 T f 1 and then this R i plus T i. So, the order will change ok. So, order will change so that we can have uh, this thing uh, it will be representing the uh, new order ok. So, you can change the priorities and so that interrupt will assume the highest priority and rest of them will follow the previous order. So, naturally it raises the question that uh, can we have this situation can we have more than one bit set to 1. So, if you do it like this then these two inter so 1 1 so I am looking for so this interrupt and this interrupt they are set to 1 and rest are all 0. So, that means that these two interrupts so they will acquire priorities higher than the remaining ones. So, your interrupt I n t 1 sorry this timer 1 and this external interrupt 1 so they will assume the highest priority followed by others and within them within these two the priority will be decided by the default priority order. So, if you consult uh, this uh, uh, relation then you see that this uh, uh, I n t was so between I n t 1 and uh, timer 1. So, I n t 1 has got the higher priority. So, as a result if you set it like this then I n t 1 will have the highest priority uh, then it will be followed by this T f 1. So, like this, so this re this relationship will come. So, I n t 1 will have the highest priority followed by T f 1 and then that will be followed by rest of the interrupts in the same order. So, uh, so I n t 0, T f 0 uh, then R i plus T i. So, they are the remaining interrupts. So, they will be following in the uh, previous order. Only thing is that these two interrupts they will have priorities higher than others. So, naturally you can understand that you cannot uh, set this interrupt priorities arbitrarily. So, there are uh, some uh, values uh, some of the interrupt combinations are uh, feasible, but you cannot set all of them simultaneously, but still but that is a good option like we can change the default uh, interrupt priorities and this is particularly true because in a system uh, when you are designing the microcontroller based uh, some embedded application. So, it may so happen that you need to take interrupt from different sources and at different times of uh, uh, program or different phases of program. So, you may require the priorities to be different though. So, instead of connecting the uh, changing the hardware connection. So, you can just change this uh, interrupt pattern the interrupt priority pattern. So, that uh, that uh, so that this uh, changing priority will be taken care of. So, that is the interrupt priority register. Next we look into the interrupt vectors ok. So, interrupt vectors so the, uh, as I said that in case of 8051 all interrupts are vectored interrupts ok. So, 8051 so uh, 8085 it had got only a few vectored interrupts and INTR was non vectored. So, here in case of 8051 this vectored interrupt their addresses are fixed like this reset. So, it will take you to the address 0000. 0, 0, 0. So, this address is fixed. Then, then this I n t 0 external interrupt 0. So, this address is 0, 0, 0, 0003, timer 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0000B. So, you see if you if you look into these two locations ok 3 and B. So, you have got only 8 memory locations in between. So, if you are writing the interrupt service routine for uh, external interrupt 0. So, if you find that and these 8 bytes are sufficient then uh, for holding your interrupt then it is fine. If it is not you have to take care of so that is so you have to use some sort of jump instructions and all that as we see as we have seen it 8085 as well. Now, so these are the interrupt uh, vector location. So, uh, so this uh, serial interrupt this has the highest address 0023 hex. 
and this uh, timer 2 overflow is uh, uh, that is called 8052. So, that is 002 B. So, that way we can have different uh, interrupt uh, addresses, the vector addresses. So, this is fixed by the designers. So, to avoid overlapping of interrupt service routines, so it is common to put jump instruction like uh, here, say we are uh, uh, we are putting uh, say at origin say uh, 0 0. So, we are putting this LJMP X SA EX 7 I SR. So, this is some interrupt service routine, external interrupt some service routine and this is uh, um, uh, the main program is at 100. So, it uh, the, from, from this this main program start uh, starts. So, now I can uh, uh, so on reset, so on reset this uh, interrupt will be coming to the, the system will be coming to this 000 B address and there it is seeing this instruction. So, at this point I can have the code for doing the reset operation. So, that way it is uh, the, the reset operation will take place. So, this is an example where uh, we have got this pin 3.3 that is INT 1 connected to a pulse generator and we will write a program in which the falling edge of the pulse will send a high bit to P 1.3 connected to LED. So, what is the situation? So, we have got uh, this, uh, the, this uh, so we have got the situation like this uh, that we have got this uh, P 3.3. So, this P 3.3 is connected to a pulse generator. So, here I have got a pulse generator that can generate this type of pulses and uh, so falling edge of the pulse will send high to P 1.3. So, P 1.3 is there. So, this is the P 1.3 and there I have got one LED connected. So, here some LED is connected here. So, if I put a 1 at this point the LED will glow. Okay. So, this program, so we can uh, develop using this interrupt. So, this uh, when this pulse low edge will come, so it will generate an interrupt and that interrupt will be interrupt service routine will be putting a 1 at this point.